Is all of that enough to blunt their political pain? Our Sunday strategy session is here. Kathleen Monk is a former NDP strategist and director of communications to the late Jack Layton. Corey Tonight was Ontario Premier Doug Ford's campaign manager and former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And Scott Reed is a CTV News political analyst and former communications director to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Hi, everybody. Hey there. Hey, nice to see hi. Scott's in studio today. So I'm, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I, right. I was listening to the Prime Minister's announcement the other day and thinking, well, they finally listened <laughs> to the Sunday Scrub. I mean, not to be glib, but for months, the three of you have been saying, put stuff on the table. Yeah. You need to drive home an agenda around the economy and you need to be specific about it. They did. My question to you, though, is, is it enough to blunt or begin to blunt the pain that they're feeling in public opinion polls? Well, not on its own, but listen, first of all, props for finally playing some cards, okay? You are in a poker game, so glad that that has been uh, recognized. Uh, that the answer is no, of course it's not enough. Of course they've got to do more. And in particular, this week did feel like it was prompted maybe by bad polls. This week did feel like it was prompted possibly by grumbling and the fact that he was going to be facing MPs in his own national caucus. Um, and so really I think the tail of the tape is what's the follow through? What's the sustained effort? And I think that the government has to start to build a story about how it sees the challenges out there. What these pieces and pieces to come all add up to. I mean, we haven't had, for example, a real thorough diagnostic from the government of, you know, this is what people are going through. These are the four, five, six problems that we got to fix. These are the levers we can pull as a federal government. Like they've got to put this stuff into context. Otherwise they feel like they're just random one-offs that may just as well have been issued as a consequence of desperation. Do you think they still have time, Kathleen, to wrap that context around it? Because to Scott's point, I'm thinking even of food prices, right? They've been this high for a very long time. We haven't heard the government talk a lot about them until now. Yeah, and the concern that I have is they think Monday, when the House comes back and apparently the CEOs are invited to town, that they will just do the right thing. And uh, and the thing is that Canadians have said in poll after poll, you, you had David on the show for Abacus, and, and, and he actually has said that, you know, in, in his polling, that Canadians point to corporate profits. They blame corporate profits for the, the, the increase in prices and thing. And so we've known for a long time they could do real things, right? They could actually implement an excise tax right away and have a windfall tax right now on, on the profit on the corporate grocery stores. But they haven't acted on any of that. And they showed last week that in one day they can take the JS, GST off purpose-built housing. So it's not like there's some mysterious force that's slowing down Trudeau. He could act, he just hasn't. And so the qu question is that Canadians will have is why not, you know? Like, and you know, I was joking with a friend earlier today saying, you know, maybe he should listen to more tr Taylor Swift, you know? It's me, hi, <laughs> I'm the problem, oh, it's no. me. No, but it, but it, but it is, because he could act. And New Democrats have been suggesting these ideas for years now, since the pandemic. And, and things like groceries can come down. We can't trust our basic needs, like healthcare, like water, like bread, to only market forces. There are ways that these things can be regulated. I think there can be like a, a debate about the merits of that. And, the, and you know, the Prime Minister, I, I remember asking various ministers, Corey, about, for example, the excise tax, and they had policy uh, concerns around the possibility of that being passed on to consumers. Like, the debate could have happened, but I do think to Kathleen's point, it does give rise to the question, and kind of circling back to what Scott said, like, what's driving this right now? And I wonder, I know we, as people who are watching this stuff, are asking that question. I do wonder, do you think Canadians are too, or do you think they're willing to accept it and say, hey, the government is starting to do stuff for me? Well, time will tell whether, you know, whether they're able to sustain this or not. I, I think, you know, they had three measures. I kind of give uh, one a D minus, uh, the other maybe a B, and uh, and one probably, uh, you know, an A minus. I, I think they're closest to the target on the grocery stuff. I think it's kind of demagoguery in a way, but it, I think it's demagoguery that'll probably get some, some traction. Uh, and and it's something that affects you know literally every Canadian because we all have to eat. We all go to the grocery store. We're all seeing the increase of prices there. And and some people are you know making a connection with corporate profits. I would argue it's probably more to do with the war in Ukraine and uh, and a carbon tax and a bunch of other things. But you know that's that's easy for me to say as a conservative. Uh, on on removal of uh, HST, uh, you know, I think it's it's great. You know, provinces, including Ontario, have been asking for the federal government to do that, and they've they've come through. And I think that that sort of 
you know, the, the, the mid-grade one. Uh, the one that I think that really didn't work uh, was uh, the uh, housing announcement uh, that they did in London. I think, you know, it's a small announcement from a $4 billion fund that they announced a year ago. I, and, and they hyped it up, like, as I think Scott said on the radio, like they uh, just invented cold fusion. Uh, <laughs> turns out it uh, was something much less than that. So. Uh, so, you know, I, I think they're, but at least they're doing something. At least they're, they're taking some, you know, they're swinging as well as just taking punches. They're now swinging and trying to hit some things uh, and showing some signs of life. The signs of life analogy is a good one, I think, because yeah. we, we were all sort of speaking throughout the summer at the, the lack of that, right, from the Liberals, and in particular around even the way in which they decide to contrast that themselves with the opposition, there was kind of an absence of that. Do you anticipate, just like the other stuff has now shifted a bit, that they will go more on the attack, or is there is that kind of dangerous ground, Scott? Uh, I think they will, but they have to do more than one thing, and they have to do more than one thing at one time. So, you know, first of all, yeah, when you're below 30 points and you're the incumbent government, uh, it concentrates the mind. So suddenly <laughs> stuff gets done. Things get announced. You move things. And so we see these announcements today. Again, I think you got to sustain that momentum and demonstrate to people that it isn't just something you've done out of desperation, but it's something that you're committed to for their betterment, not just for yours as a government. But I think there's other things. You're going to have to go after the opposition leader because he is flying high in the polls. And I don't think it's just done by yelling at each other in the House of Commons because, frankly, people other than us don't bother to watch. They've got to get some paid media out there matching those ads that Polyev has telling us that he's terrific. Hey, he's not terrific, say somebody else's ads. And then finally, I like the idea of the grocery store stuff. I do agree it's probably bordering on demagoguery. But when I'm unpopular, you know what I do? I go find somebody less popular than me and I say, how about that guy? So keep going, keep sticking with it. They've got to do more than one thing, and they got to do it well because they're coming from behind. Do you think that uh, we were talking last week a little bit about the ads and whether or not now is the time, given the the prospect of another two years? Do you think they need to start paying for some? Uh, they know, need to ads have to some, counter the for other sure. Market? They need some ads, but mainly they need to have some wins, Bashi. They mm -hmm. need to have some wins, and you know what? They won last week. Why? Because they managed to step on Polyev's announcement. Mr. Polyev came out with an announcement as well on housing, and then he was producing the new the build. Houses Not Bureaucracy Act, but the Liberals won that media cycle. They they manage, and they, maybe they'll continue to win next week. So small little wins like that, they've got to start building up because right now, Prime Minister Trudeau's depth perception is off. He doesn't see the freight train coming for him until it's way too late. And it's like he keeps on thinking he has more time than he does. And it's coming right at him, and he's going to get hit. And so he's got to start acting like Scott said, and he's got to show that momentum and change the course and get out of the way of that big train. The point, Corey, about uh, the Conservatives' announcement is an interesting one because it's like the opposite has been true so for so much of the summer. And even prior to that, in that it has felt like the government is often responding to things that the Conservatives in particular or the opposition are putting out there. More on the defense rather than the offense. Would you be, if you were advising, would you say go more on the offense? Well, I think they have to, but you know, part of that is using the levers of power. And I think that's what you're seeing with uh, with Champagne and, and these, the tax measure on housing, on rental housing. Uh, in the announcement they made from their fund, as tepid as it was, these are the things that governments can do. They can actually make decisions. They can take action in real time. And, uh, and it seems like they've just been treading water. They haven't been swimming. And uh, so, uh, like I, I, you know, I think they have to do that. I, I would uh, agree with Scott that advertising is something that, that you know perplexes all of us. Why they haven't been out uh, to try to define uh, uh, Polya before he can define himself? But I, I actually think that horse has left the barn. Like I think that the, the conservatives have successfully gone out there and made uh, introduced uh, Polya to Canadians in a way that's quite favorable. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think it may be too late on that front. Now they're going to have to do something, but you know, the, the efficacy of that effort is going to be far reduced as a result of going second instead of first. As some great people on this very panel have said, time will tell. I'll leave it there. Thank you, Corey Dyke, Scott Reed, and Kathleen Monk.